So as we look at Trey Lyles on the offensive end playing as a small ball five, we're going to start in ball screen situations. And the first thing I want to do is I want to see him get rid of this weird thing where he just kind of spins in place. Like I think he has to be decisive. I'm going to roll or I'm going to pop. You'll see on this one where he sets the screen facing the sideline, the bench, and he ends up just spinning a full circle 360 degrees almost in the same place, putting no pressure on the defense whatsoever. Here in the Jazz game, you're going to see him do the same thing. And on this one, there's really, I think if he rolls here, like right now, if he's turning to roll, I think it puts a little bit of pressure on the Jazz and Hassan Whiteside to make a decision. And I, I don't know whether it ends up in a bucket or not, but at least maybe gives a chance for him to get a layup or Corey Joseph to get a layup. And then when he does roll, okay, he's going to have to do it and finish with crafty ways in the same way that I talked about with Luca Garza. Like this one right here, this should be a lob to the rim and an alley-oop dunk. But we know Trey Lyles isn't going to do that. So when he does get these situations, he's going to have to catch, shot fake, which is something we'll talk a lot about, and at least get to the free throw line like we see there. But the biggest advantage he brings to a team in ball screen situations is this. We saw this against the Jazz. This is in the fourth quarter. Pick and pop and knock down shots. And he can do that very effectively, even though the three-point percentage isn't necessarily great right now and because he does that and again playing against second unit fives where I think he should be in a second unit small ball five then you're going to get guys like this running out at him jumping at him and creating foul situations like we see on that one or here in transition not even with the ball screen going against Hassan Whiteside, he's going to be able to shot fake and then create advantages going to the rim like we see there. So I do think him on the perimeter, catching on the perimeter like that, especially pick and pop, can be really advantageous and put second unit five men in tough spots. Even in the mid-range here, he has a nice mid-range stroke. Here you see him square up, drive on Wagner, and then you see that craftiness around the basket as he gets the and one, gets him up in the air with a shot fake. Now here, I'm not going to say he's going to take advantage of guys like DeMar DeRozan over and over. And I realize the score here. All I'm saying is if he's able to show a rep like this against DeMar DeRozan, imagine what he'd be able to do consistently as a small ball five against second unit fives. So I do think he can be solid in those situations. Pick and pop, transition, catch, shot fake, square ups, and especially using that shot fake. Where I'd like to see him get better is discretion with his shot attempts and how aggressive he is. I don't know that this is a shot I love, even though he makes it, all right? If he misses that shot, it's not always about the result. It's about the process, and I don't think that's something you want to see him doing consistently, and it's something we see a little bit too much. And then especially this. So here he squares up white side, attacks, and he doesn't get the advantage. That's okay. White side won that rep. That's fine. But then pass the ball. There's still 10 seconds on the shot clock. Don't go to this and end up getting blocked. So that's where I'd like to see him just be a little bit okay, better in some of his decision making like we're going to see here on these next few clips. Whenever I did my scout on him or my breakdown on him when he got signed, I thought he was going to be a great ball mover and keep the flow of the offense. So here in transition, he catches, doesn't try to do too much against Pascal with Whiteside working, uh, hanging out in the lane, passes out to Josh Jackson. I realize it looks like a simple play, but it's the right play and it keeps the ball moving. Same thing here. He catches, immediately attacks downhill, makes the night play as the defense comes over, and Sadiq Bey is able to get to the free throw line. We're going to see another one here with the one more pass, catches, Close out comes, again, whether it's because of the rep on him, the shot fake, whatever it is, he gets guys to close out to him, keeps the floor space, and gets an open shot for Josh Jackson. Even though he misses, it's the right play, it's the smart play. And then one final one that really doesn't look like much, but what I love, he catches this, he does an ISO, he makes a decisive decision. Am I going to shoot it? I'm going to drive it. He decides to go right into a DHO, hand off to Saban Lee, and Saban Lee's able to knock it down. I would like to see Trey Lyles turn into or show even more just being a ball mover and keeping the flow of the offense going.